So first, let's talk about the East India Company. The British East India Company and the American colonial governments were twins in a way. Both the East India Company and many of the American colonies uh, and Caribbean colonies began in the early 17th century. Uh, and within uh, the English, what was then the English Empire, they basically were private ve ventures that became imperial governments only later. Uh, the East India Company was established as a monopoly on all trade east of the Cape of Good Hope. It was a way uh, for, a pr for a private venture, essentially, to pursue the national interest, the English national interest, at its own risk, um, at the expense, so uh, as a way of kind of uh, attempting to muscle out uh, potential imperial rivals in Holland or in France. Uh, the downside of a monopoly, of course, is that it stifles competition. Uh, it allows uh, one company too much leverage, both in the Indian Ocean and at home. Um, and, uh, and the East India Company is uh, different from the American colonies in that the colonies never achieve that kind of leverage in Parliament, uh, which is one of the things that's going to lead to conflict in 1773. Now, in the aftermath of the Seven Years' War, or the French and Indian War, uh, which ended in 1763, the British Empire found itself responsible for new domains. Um, if you looked across the globe, you would see Bengali weavers, Iroquois hunters, Irish peasants, Afro-Caribbean slaves, Boston shipwrights, Virginia planters, and Quebecois habitants, uh, all of them uh, f f finding themselves potentially under the authority of the British Empire. Uh, in the past, uh, the, the different groups who had lived uh, in, in the British Empire had relied on flexible arrangements with cooperative local leaders uh, as a way of governing the empire. But after 1763, the British ministry became impatient with this, kind, with this level of flexibility and with this uh, kind of loose connection to authority. Uh, and so the British Parliament tried to tighten contro control over its various colonial and imperial holdings, uh, particularly over the East India Company and the American colonies. Uh, they sent imperial officials, many of whom were thought to be corrupt. Uh, they levied more taxes. They made it clear that the people of these colonies and companies needed to obey the central government uh, in London. Uh, we know what effect this had uh, and, and how this looked in the American colonies. This looked like the proclamation of 1763 and the attendant troop presence. Uh, this looked like the Stamp Act the ta of 1765, the Townsend Acts of 1768, uh, the, the commissioners of the customs arriving in Boston in 1768, uh, the, the Boston Massacre in 1770, and the Tea Act in 1773. Uh, so this is a story that's familiar to students of American history. But what did this uh, tightening of imperial control look like for the East India Company? Well, around the 1760s, the East India Company was becoming particularly powerful in Bengal. They were collecting taxes, they were building up a military presence, uh, they were striking new arrangements with local traders, they were encouraging certain kinds of cash crops, uh, they were taking away uh, power that local elites had previously held. Um, and uh, in addition to this, East India Company employees, many of them were so greedy and corrupt that people back home in England were starting to take notice. And right at this moment, in 1769 to 1770, a terrible famine uh, hits the re region of Bengal. Uh, and perhaps, uh, historians estimate today that perhaps 1.2 million people uh, died during this famine. Uh, and to give you a little perspective, there were only about 2.5 million people in the American colonies at the time. Uh, and so this was the equivalent of wiping out half the white and black population of, uh, of the 13 American colonies. Uh, so this was a, a horrible tragedy, uh, and news of the horrible cruelties that were being perpetrated in India, uh, in some cases by East India Company servants, but also uh, uh, as a result of this famine, uh, these kinds of stories were kind of combining and making their way back to Great Britain and to the American colonies. Uh, also at this time, the East India Company's financial picture is severely hurting. They were overextended in India even as the people were uh, suffering, uh, and a wave of bankruptcies tore through Britain and Europe in 1772, and so as a result, the East India Company finds itself in the midst of a financial crisis. And to save the company, Br the British Parliament uh, focuses on the company's tea trade with China as a way of propping the company up and allowing it to get over its, uh, it, it, get over its financial difficulties. 
Um, the, the East India Company at the time was importing way more tea than uh, people in Great Britain were drinking, uh, partly because various smugglers were competing with the East India Company. This was illegal, but uh, French, Danish companies would import tea to continental Europe, and then it would be smuggled into Great Britain, which was, uh, was cutting into the, the British East India Company's ability to sell this tea to its customers. Um, and so Parliament's solution for this in 1773 was, why don't we play the East India Company and the American colonies off one another? This isn't their intention, but this is sort of what's happening. So what they're going to do is they're going to allow the East India Company to unload its surplus tea on the American market. Uh, this would make tea cheaper for Americans, but it would also have three effects that the Americans uh, really found objectionable. The first is that this was going to be an emblem of taxation without representation. There had been a tax on tea since the Townsend Duties of 1768. It had never been taken off. And so if you're going to unload a bunch of tea on the American market, this is, um, this, this is just reinforcing to the Americans that they still have to pay a tax on this tea, um, even though they had no voting rights in Parliament. Uh, the second effect is that the money from this tea, the revenue from this tea, uh, was going to support um, certain uh, civil officials, particularly in Massachusetts. Uh, and this was also something that, uh, that the people of Massachusetts really found objectionable. Uh, and finally, this new ability for the East India Company to sell tea directly to America was extending the privileges of, let's remember, a, a monopoly company. Uh, and this was going to crowd out other British traders, American traders, uh, in a way that uh, that, that the Americans, uh, that was horrifying certain American merchants. And so when the Americans begin to be upset with the British government, they actually uh, very briefly look to India. Uh, in a series of five pamph pamphlets, a New York son of liberty named Hamden, who may have been Alexander McDougall, uh, he painted a picture of the East India Company as an evil monopoly built on bribes. Wonder not then, he wrote, that power thus obtained at the expense of the national commerce should be used for the most uh, tyrannical and cruel purposes. Uh, he referred to the famine in Bengal that, had just kill, that uh, was in the process of killing 1.2 1, 1 million people, and he called the East India Company lost to all the feelings of humanity as they monopolized the uh, absolute necessaries of life in India at a time of apprehended scarcity. Uh, he said, the purchase of the company's iniquities, tea, must be sent to the colonies. Uh, he said, this is what's happening. The tea is being sent to the colonies, uh, the profit of which is to support the tyranny of the East India Company in the East, uh, enslave the West, by which he meant America, and prepare us fit victims for the exercise of that horrid hum inhumanity that they have practiced in the face of the sun on the helpless Asiatics. So in other words, uh, all of the, uh, the rapine and, uh, and, and horrible corruption that the East India Company and the British Empire have committed in India, they are now going to bring this to America. That is what is so horrifying about the Tea Act of 1773, and that is the reason that Americans ought to protest it. Uh, a Newport newspaper chimed in, say, it, and it was disgusted that the company had probably shed more innocent blood over the previous 20 years. Uh, and in this newspaper piece, they estimated that they had slain uh, as many as 3 million people uh, than all the other world's wars combined. Uh, so again, the East India Company is seen as this monster that's being brought to the doors of the American colonies. John Dickinson, uh, the lawyer who had become famous in 17, 1768 for his letters from a farmer in Pennsylvania against the British taxes, uh, took up the pen name Rusticus and launched a similar attack on the East India Company. Their conduct in Asia for some years past has given ample proof how little they regard the laws of nations, the rights, liberties, or lives of men. He continued that they have, by the most unparalleled barbarities, extortions, and monopolies, stripped the miserable inhabitants of their property and reduced whole provinces to indigence and ruin. 1,500,000, uh, 1.5 million, it is said, perished by famine in one year, not because the earth denied its fruits, but uh, because this company and their servants engrossed all the necessaries of life and set them at so high a rate that the poor could not purchase them. Uh, having denied Bengal of its wealth and corrupted it, uh, he, said, he wrote, they now, it seems, cast their eyes on America as a new theater, whereon to exercise their talents of rapine, oppression, and cruelty. The monopoly of tea, I dare say, is but a small part of the plan that they have formed to strip us of our property. But thank God we are not sepoys or Mar nor Marathas, but British subjects who are born to liberty, who know its worth, and who prize it high. <laughs> 
Most Americans, uh, by saying these things, they're not looking to start a global revolution that would include Indians and Americans side by side uh, overthrowing the British Empire. Uh, and as you can tell from these quotes, these American writers uh, still had quite ethnocentric views of who deserved liberty and who didn't. Uh, but still, they saw India as a warning, and in response, uh, they were going to dump this tea into the harbor at Boston to prevent this type of monster from coming to America's shores. And eventually, this resulting, the resultant political conflict would erupt into bloodshed at Lexington in April 1775 and the Eight-Year War uh, that followed.